Tesla's 4680 battery team is on a roll. And according to an official update, it looks like we are witnessing the beginning of an exponential production growth curve for 4680 batteries. Stick around as I dive into the details. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. Over the last several years, I've been somewhat disappointed with Tesla's 4680 battery production progress. However, recently they have been doing a lot of great things, including an extremely impressive production milestone that they recently achieved, which I will discuss shortly. But overall, I believe it's safe to say that Tesla's 4680 battery program is a success, and I feel very confident calling it a success for these main reasons. First of all, Tesla's 4680 cyber cells, the batteries that are in the Tesla Cybertruck, those batteries have an energy density on par with the Panasonic 2170 batteries. If you look at this chart shared by Jordan from the limiting factor on YouTube, based on Jordan's analysis, it looks like the cell level energy density of Tesla's 4680 batteries has finally reached parity with the Panasonic 2170 batteries. And those Panasonic 2170 batteries really are a solid industry benchmark. The reason why this is so important is because this means that if you equip a vehicle with 4680 batteries instead of 2170 batteries, there is no longer a range handicap by doing that because of a lack of energy density. For example, if you remember the first generation 4680 battery cells that were in the Tesla Model Y with a structural battery pack for a short period of time, that vehicle had a low amount of range and that was much in part due to the fact that the energy density of those first generation cyber cells was not that great. But with the Cybertruck that has the new cyber cells, that's no longer a limitation. And so the Cybertruck is able to get a decent amount of range. And based on what we can tell, this number is just going to improve with time as Tesla continues to improve the energy density of the 4680 battery. The next reason why I feel confident calling Tesla's 4680 battery program a success comes down to the fact that they finally have solved the dry manufacturing process on the cathode side of the battery. With this dry process solved, this is really the last of the core technologies that Tesla needed to accomplish to make their 4680 batteries cost less than the competition, and this makes them much more efficient at scale to produce versus competitors' batteries. Now, I do want to note that while Tesla has solved the dry process on the cathode side of the battery, very likely we haven't quite seen Tesla ramp up mass production of those batteries with dry cathodes just yet, because based on something that was mentioned previously, specifically by Lars Moravi in Tesla's Q2 2024 conference call, he mentioned specifically doing a production launch of batteries with those dry cathodes in Q4 of this year. So very likely Tesla is close to mass producing these batteries with dry cathodes, but very likely they haven't started that process yet. As a reminder, Tesla did actually officially confirm that they have a Cybertruck that they're testing with these in-house dry cathode 4680 cells. And we haven't heard any official updates on that, but I'm assuming that that's going quite well and that we actually will see mass production of 4680 batteries with dry cathodes by the end of this year. Another reason why I feel confident calling Tesla's 4680 battery program a success is because mass production is happening and we're at the beginning of what looks like an exponential growth curve for 4680 production. On September 14th, the official Tesla X account posted this image of Optimus holding a 4680 battery cell. And in this post, it was written, quote, produced our 100 millionth 4680 cell across all our factories. Now this 100 million number is an accumulative number, but Tesla got there really quickly from their last 50 million milestone. And I'll talk about that shortly. But first of all, I wanna take this 100 million cell number and translate that into gigawatt hours. If we use a nominal energy per cell of 95.2 watt hours as shared by the limiting factor on YouTube for the new second generation 4680 battery cell, and if you multiply that by 100 million battery cells, that translates to approximately 9.52 gigawatt hours of batteries produced. Now do note that this 100 million number does also include Tesla's first generation 4680 battery cells, but they weren't producing that many batteries early on. So that is going to drop this number a little bit from this estimate here, but very likely it's still somewhere at least around nine gigawatt hours of batteries that have been produced by Tesla 
their own in-house 4680 batteries. That is quite impressive. And as I'm going to talk about shortly, Tesla is finally starting to see exponential growth with their 4680 battery production. So this number should go up quite quickly. With that being said, for perspective, I want to go back and talk about previous 4680 production milestones that Tesla shared. For example, on February 18th of 2022, on the official Tesla X account, they posted this picture of their Cato Road facility and the 4680 team there, and it was written, quote, celebrating our 1,000,000th 4680 cell in January. The next big update came on December 25th of 2022, and this milestone was a mixed achievement not only by the Cato Road team, but also by the Giga Texas 4680 battery team, but the team was able to achieve a production rate of 868,000 cells in a seven day period. On June 16th of 2023, Tesla announced that they had produced their 10 millionth 4680 battery cell, and it looks like maybe that was specifically only for Gigafactory Texas production. And then October 11th of 2023, they announced that they had produced their 20 millionth 4680 battery cell. Once again, it looks like specifically at Gigafactory Texas alone. Then on June 5th of this year, Tesla announced on X that the manufacturing team was able to produce their 50 millionth battery cell. And once again, that looks like that was exclusively at Gigafactory Texas. And then that brings us to our latest milestone, Tesla announcing that they have produced their 100 millionth 4680 battery cell, but this number is across all of their factories. When it comes to how many factories Tesla has producing 4680 batteries, as far as I know, Tesla is producing batteries in two factories, their Cato Road facility in Fremont, California. And that's really kind of a prototype factory where they test and prove out new technologies. Then they have the cell production lines at Gigafactory, Texas. Long term, of course, it looks like Tesla plans to produce batteries at Gigafactory Shanghai, at Gigafactory Berlin, and also 4680 batteries at Gigafactory Nevada. But right now, I believe it's still only those two main factories. When it comes to Tesla's Fremont Cato Road facility, there is a possibility that not too far from that facility where Tesla leased a second building in that area, that they may be producing some 4680 batteries there. And this was previously reported on June 8th of 2023 in the San Francisco Business Times article where Tesla signed a lease for a new building on Fremont Boulevard. And from what sources shared with the San Francisco Business Times, it looks like this facility was to support production of Tesla's 4680 battery cell technology. Nonetheless, since it looks like the bulk of Tesla's 4680 production right now is happening at Gigafactory Texas, best we can tell, the bulk of that number going from 50 million battery cells being produced to 100 million battery cells produced, the bulk of that is likely from Gigafactory Texas. So while this isn't all going to be 100% accurate here, because once again, Tesla said all of their factories, and I'm not sure how much of that was produced at their Cato Road facility. Nonetheless, when you look at this chart that I've created here, which really tracks Tesla's cell production progress at Gigafactory Texas, at the start of production at Gigafactory Texas to their first 10 million battery cells produced there, it took around 262 plus days to achieve that. Then from 10 million to 20 million, it took 117 days. From 20 million to 50 million cells, that took around 238 days. But for Tesla to go from approximately 50 million battery cells to 100 million battery cells, that only took around 101 days. When you look at the per cell average there, you can see how there was a huge jump recently going from 50 million to 100 million battery cells per day, nearly an average of producing 500,000 battery cells per day. And it's important to note that this is an average, meaning that if they started at a much lower rate and they ended at a much higher rate, the average is going to show the middle of that. So very likely they're at a much higher daily rate than that. And I'll talk about that more shortly, but that's a huge jump there in battery production rate. Now, the reason I've mentioned exponential growth when it comes to Tesla's 4680 production, because if you take the data from this chart, specifically the per day average compared to the amount of time it took them to get to that per day average, you can see that with previous growth, it was kind of a small jump from milestone to milestone. But as you can see, based on the average daily production rate with that last update, there was a huge jump there. And this graph is showing that we're beginning an exponential climb. One of the reasons why I believe we're seeing such a jump here is because Tesla is opening up more production lines at Gigafactory Texas. Nonetheless, when it comes to really equating this out to an annual run rate, which I believe is also really important, based on an update that was shared on March 20th of 2024, I calculate that Tesla was at an annual run rate at that point of producing around 6.67 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries 
per year. Then during Tesla's Q2 2024 conference call, which was held on July 23rd of this year, it was announced that Tesla was able to produce more than 1,400 Cybertrucks worth of 4680 battery cells in a week, which equates to an annual run rate of around 9.34 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. When it comes to calculating Tesla's current annual production run rate, unfortunately, this recent update is an accumulative number, not a weekly number, so we have to do a little bit of guesswork here. But nonetheless, it is a huge improvement over the previous period of time, just based on the amount of time it took them to get there. And based on this post by the limiting factor on X quote, in terms of gigawatt hours, if we annualize the average run rate of 50 million cells over 101 days, that's 16.4 gigawatt hours per year of usable energy density, 17.2 gigawatt hours per year of total energy density. Jordan also wrote, quote, note that those numbers are based on the average run rate, which means that the peak run rates that they're hitting or may be currently capable of is likely above 20 gigawatt hours per year. So going to this chart, if we just estimate the low end that Tesla is currently at a run rate of 20 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, that means that right now they're likely able to build over 4 million 4680 battery cells per week or over 575,000 per day. Those are starting to be some really impressive numbers and I'm getting really excited finally that Tesla is achieving mass production of 4680 batteries. There is one last key milestone that I wanna discuss that really is key to Tesla's 4680 battery success. And while I don't believe they've quite achieved this goal, I believe they are on track and will achieve it very shortly. This is the goal of producing 4680 batteries at a cost lower than batteries from their suppliers. Once again, I don't believe they've done that quite yet, but they are on track and I believe they will get there by the end of the year, which is their internal goal. Now, once again, since they have actually figured out how to manufacture their batteries, the cathodes in their batteries with their dry process, that once again completes all the core technologies needed to produce 4680 batteries at a very efficient price point. And now that Tesla has done that and they're going to be ramping up that process according to Tesla's last update, in Q4 of this year, once they start doing that at scale, that's going to really make producing these batteries very cost efficient. As a reminder, it appears like this was more than just an internal goal and it was actually somewhat of an ultimatum as it was reported in this late post article. But basically there was an ultimatum that if Tesla is not able to achieve a lower cost of 4680 battery production than batteries from their suppliers, there was kind of a threat there that Tesla might consider giving up on their 4680 battery program. But once again, it looks like that's not going to be the case. The Tesla 4680 battery team has stepped up. They're reaching a mass production of those batteries. They figured out how to produce those batteries with a dry cathode process. And as I mentioned previously, the energy density of these batteries is on par with 2170 batteries. With that being said, I am really looking forward to future updates because once again, I believe we are on the start of an exponential growth curve, meaning that future updates should be even more impressive. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to know what you think. In addition, I wanna say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.